Lecture 9-3, Gravity as an Agent. Talked about water, wind so far as agents of erosion. Gravity is another one, albeit not as common as the other types for gravity, since gravity is always acting, it's always there. This is a very important one to look at to see how it affects the landscape. Now we know weathering, erosion, deposition act together and cycle the wears down and builds up or surface. All of this is involved with how gravity can move material downhill because it can build up on top and they get deposited down. And this process can keep happening because water or wind can bring it back up to the top. Now we call these mass movements because any one of several processes that move sediment downhill where gravity is the main force, we're not talking about one or two, we're talking about whole sections of material being moved downhill at a time. Now there are different contributing factors to what can cause a mass movement downhill. Uh, the soil type, if it's loose soil, if it's uh, behave differently than if it's very dense soil, uh, if it's soil that holds onto a lot of moisture versus soil that's dry. Vegetation, because you know if you have a plant, here's my plant, <laughs> it's going to have a root system. And typically the bigger the root system, the more likely that mass movement's not going to occur in that area because if you only have a little bit of roots, say like right here, that's going to only hold on to a little bit of soil, but if you have a big root system, it's kind of holding all that soil in place, keeping it from being able to move. Um, water, of course, whether it's form of precipitation, runoff, or maybe just because of a nearby river, stream, groundwater, something. But typically, moisture has to be there in order for a mass movement to occur. And then, of course, the angle of the slope. Uh, so, if, you know, we're talking about a hillside that looks like that versus a hillside that looks like that. There's going to be a big difference in the type of mass movement or when mass movement occurs. Now, different types of downhill movements, landslides, uh, rock and soil slide quickly downhill. You can see that this gets broken up over time. This is going to be typically be drier, but we get our general motion downhill. Avalanche, pretty much instead of rock and soil, you're dealing with snow. And for this to occur, there has to be weakening occurring in the connections of the soil below the surface. And pretty much you have to have that build up and weakening over time, and then something has to trigger it. Oftentimes it could be something like an earthquake. It could be a, some sort of vibration that's going to trigger this mass movement downhill. Mud flows and lahars, very similar. Mud flows is just where now we mix water with the rock and soil, so we get mud. Here you can see a case of this city here, which was uh, downstream. All of a sudden, a huge, massive mud flow came and overflowed the banks, um, causing the city to be flooded with mud. And lahars is just when we get that pyroclastic material from a volcano that mixes with the rocky debris and water, and that can also be just as devastating as lava can be. Slumping and creep, these are the last two that we're going to talk about. A slump is when one big piece, one big section, moves downhill at a time. And so it's all connected, one thing sliding down. So like in here, you can see one, two, three different slumps occurring. The creep is where we get this general down, very slow motion, where we don't see things breaking off, but you see things bending. So you can see roads get shifted, and they'll cause them to crack. Uh, you can see fence lines will all of a sudden like dip down. You can see that trees, which normally you think about base of a tree growing like that, but all of a sudden now I have a tree growing like that. Um, these are all evidence of, of creeps. Creeps is a very slow, gradual shift downhill, whereas slump is one big piece sliding downhill at a time. Slumps will happen a lot along riverbeds because they'll kind of wear away the bottom here. And you'll probably have some motion of water in the soil itself. And so that will eventually weaken it enough that we get this whole motion down. 